Hey, hey, True Believers, St. Glenn team here, and Twiddles is flying around going crazy. Uh, another batch of new comic book reviews. Got Supergirl right behind me, Stray Dogs number four. We got the uh, chapter one of The Bride of Doom and Lighthouse number two. Got a, you're good. Supergirl, no, man, Supergirl. Just, you know what? Kick back, relax, enjoy. Before you do, though, make sure you're clicking that uh, like button. Make sure you're subscribed. And if uh, so, also make sure that those uh, notifications are set on all because that's what really matters here. Okay, and comment, comment, comment. And uh, away we go. All right, so let's start off with uh, Supergirl. <laughs> um what is this supergirl world of tomorrow woman of tomorrow or something like that this is uh i started reading it first i'm thinking okay this is kind of dull first of all it's not even supergirl that starts off the uh show or the the book it isn't it's this uh, other character and we we see she, okay young alien all right no, no i'm with you i'm with you uh father gets killed all righty so uh then the little girl decides she's gonna go off and she's gonna hire a uh, a ruthless man in order to capture the killer of her father um, because the the guy had betrayed the father and she wants to make sure that he serves justice and that he knows that the justice he has served is because of her father and so she goes to a bar and she finds kind of a Conan type uh, guy and she uh, attempts to hire this person but he gets betray uh, he betrays her and then he dis she discovers a drunken woman and it turns out to be Supergirl. And she says, no, no, you need to bring in my the, the killer of my father. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. No, you, you, you're, you're, you're kidding me here, right? You cannot be serious about this. This is the plot of True Grit. The John Wayne movie, remade by the Coen brothers with uh, Bridges, Jeff Bridges. Are you freaking kidding me? This is what you guys are doing for Supergirl? You're rewriting True Grit to fit uh, Supergirl into it? Oh, yes, they are, my friends. Um, <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, good Lord in heaven. Nothing is sacred. Nothing is sacred to these people. It, it, it's, a, it's very slow. It's very plotting. It's not all that great. Uh, I love True Grit. My favorite John Wayne film. Uh, well, maybe the shootest, maybe the cowboys are in there, but my, one of my favorite two, uh, John Wayne films, definitely my favorite uh, Coen Brothers movie. Uh, it really is good. It's it's one of those stories I would have said, oh, there's no way they can wimp this thing up and make it bad. And lo and behold, DC Comics has found out a way to do that. <laughs> I was like, are you freaking kidding me? You're remaking True Grit with Supergirl. Oh, good Lord in heaven. What are they going to do next? What the freaking hell are they going to do next? Uh, I, look, I, I'm not recommending this book. I can't. Even And look, here's the thing. Stories are told and retold and used in different ways. This isn't the first time anybody's ever done that. So I'm not saying just doing that is, is bad. They don't tell a good version of the story here either. And that's the main problem. And in all honesty, once again, much like my complaint about... Uh, the future state of Supergirl. Supergirl is not the main character of this story. She's a good character. She deserves better. She's not given better in this particular story, and that's where I have my problem with it. Okay, so so here's the thing. I have been praising this series uh, since issue number one. I love it. It's got a Disney look to it, but it's got a very dark story as we've got dogs who are remembering very little. They've got short-term memories, but as they go, they're realizing that perhaps their, their master, whom they love, is killing their former owners and then stealing them. And we think that's about as dark as this story gets, and then this issue drops and goes, oh no, we have another level to sink to. Uh, in such a brilliant way. I'm not saying sink in quality. This is an amazing story. This is one of the best horror comic books I've, I've read in a long time. And it's got the look of a Disney cartoon. And I think that turns off some people. Like They, they see the Disney art. They see uh, the, the happy-go-lucky dogs and everything like that. And they think, oh, this is, 
it's a cartoon. It's a kid's book. So this isn't going to hold much value for me because, you know, I, I'm, I'm a grown-up. I like bigger things. But no, this if you're missing out on this one, you need to catch up somehow. I'm going to recommend this issue, but I'm going to make sure to recommend you find a way to get issues one through three. At the very least, the trade paperback in this one. Um, there's kind of like the oldest. The oldest dog there, the one that's been with their new master the longest. He's the hardest to... Uh, He's the hardest to convince that there's something wrong with the master. And uh, this one, he gets convinced. <laughs> I can't, I don't want to explain too much. This is going to be a short review. Just tell you something. This is, this is one of, if not the best series I've been reading um, recently. And it's, uh, it's just so freaking good. And I, I thought, I thought it was about to give us a flat line and then maybe let's get to the ending or, or something like that but this has been on a steady in, in, in client or yeah in in, in uh intention the art like i said i love the art um it is so contrast to the dark story that we're getting uh oh man what a great freaking book this is you got to do yourself a favor and pick this one up i have to admit i like being surprised now Fantastic Four number 32 being enjoyable, entertaining, it shouldn't be surprising because in all honesty, I've been praising Dan Slott's run on Fantastic Four since he freaking started, really. Um, yet I am because at this point in time, I'm ready to just write off Marvel and DC 100%, but occasionally something comes out and makes me go, aha, they're doing something right. This is called The Bride of Doom, and... It's basically, it starts off talking about uh, Johnny Storm's mm, loose ways, I should say, um, his womanizing. And, of course, it culminates with the fact that one of the women that he uh, he has womanized is going to be Dr. Doom's new new bride. Um, so, obviously, there's, there's going to be some drama and some tension brought from that. But the thing is, is, this follows all the rules that I like about old Marvel, and that's one of the reasons why I'm praising this book. One, of course, it is entertaining. It's fun. But it also gives backstory, so we understand where all the characters are coming from and who all the characters are. Not so much with Doctor Doom, whom we know uh, he's just one of those people, or, uh, but we do know the main players. We do know Johnny. We do know the women that he's talking about. Um... And we are told Dr. Doom's motivations as well as he's explaining why he wants to marry uh, his second in command. So everything's set up. Everything's done well here. And this is a surprise to me just because I'm so used to just let's, you gotta, Marvel sucks. We all know Marvel sucks. So since we all know that, why don't we, you know, read the book and give it its day in court, right? Um, and that's kind of how this is. That's how. That's kind of how how I, I approach this book, and uh, pleasantly surprised. I am enjoying it. I am having a good time with with this story. Uh, I'm gonna have issue number 33 probably in the next group of videos because they came up running uh, anyway. Um, but so far, so good. I like it. I like the fact that they capture the characters well. The art's okay. Um, I like the fact that we get the backstory that we know where we're going. With this story, it's not written for the trades, it's written for the issue. It might make one whole story that could fit into a trade, but this is a good one-shot story that fits a bigger story, and that's the way comics, all comics, should be. Okay, so let's talk about Lighthouse number two. I've, I've actually got these right next to me, by the way. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about Lighthouse number two. This is a, a book... Once again, I picked it up on a whim. It was one of those things where it's like, hey, you're this close to a free stamp. You want to pick something up? I picked up Lighthouse and enjoyed it, so I'm checking this out. Uh, it's a Jules Verne taken into space, much like True Grit written for Supergirl, but this one is done well. I'm I'm enjoying this. This is a... Uh, th this I, I'm trying to remember this girl's name, but she's only called Mistress throughout the... Uh, throughout the book by a robot companion who's trying to save um, a member of a spaceship that came that these pirates are trying to attack and that's it this is a big chase book that's what's going on except for it's it's exciting it's fun it's uh, adventurous it's what you want from uh, 
It's, it's what you want from a comic, in all honesty. Uh, is this issue perfect? No. It follows a lot of... Uh, it follows a lot of tropes and such that we've seen in comic books like this one. Still, it's a strong book. Uh, we get this character we find out is uh, is uh, sentient liquid, and I thought that was kind of a, an interesting twist as well. There's just uh, it's got a good imagination to this story, and of course a big reveal that um, I don't think they built up enough to be what they thought. Like, it was a reveal, sure. And it's like, an, oh, okay, I get where you're coming from. But they didn't talk enough. Like, she was in a war, and this the big reveal has to deal with that. But they don't talk enough about her experiences there for this to be a huge reveal. There's not enough explained for this to go, oh, my gosh. Leading up to that, it's, like I said, it's a very exciting, very fun book. But the big reveal, I was like, and. And uh, so, okay, I'm still going to get issue number three. I want to find out where this goes. It's just I don't think this was what they thought it was going to be. That's all I'm saying. So it's the end of the video. Usually I like to line them up the worst to the best. And I've got to say, you know what? You know which one's the worst. It's, it's this one right here. Supergirl is freaking horrible. It was not good. I went, No, I can't say horrible. You, you heard the review. It was just... To rip off a true grit gang. I don't know if that's where they're gonna go with the other issues, but this one, this one screams true grit. Uh let's see. After that, I'm gonna have to go right over here to the lighthouse. Still a good book, still a good book, but a little bit weaker than others. Uh Fantastic Four, second place, but dang, you gotta be picking up those stray dogs, people. I mean, that is an amazing story. All right, but that's the order I would put them in. What about you? Let me know what your opinions are. Have you read these? Put it down in the comment below. Even if you're just saying hi. Even if you're saying, hey, I, I just saw your channel and boy, are you fat and bald. That's cool too. Just so long as you're commenting because that helps out the algorithm. Also, if you don't mind helping out, uh, you know, click like, share, subscribe, comment, comment, comment. Don't forget to hit that notification bell set on all. If you don't mind helping out the channel financially, there's a link to Patreon and to Ko-Fi in the description below. Uh, just drop a dollar in the teller. There's a little tip jar, Ko-Fi. Hey, I like that video. Here's a dollar. Thank you. I'm like a guy with a guitar case on the street, but this is my street, so what do you got to do? All righty. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.